Well, we are expecting Vice President Kamala Harris to announce her running mate in the next 24 hours ahead of her battleground state blitz with her VP pick, whoever that is. It does kick off in Philadelphia tomorrow. Now, she reportedly met with at least three finalists yesterday at her Naval Observatory home in D.C. That included Arizona Senator Mark Kelly, who some Democrats have been seen as pushing to send a tough signal on the border and that that would be her pick based on her we polling on the border. I want to bring in National Border Patrol Council Vice President Art Del Cueto. Art, you were with former President Donald Trump's running mate, Ohio Senator J.D. Vance, at the border in Arizona last Thursday. I do want to hear about that tour and your thoughts, but let me ask you this. What is the purview and what is the view of Mark Kelly in Arizona? Is he strong enough to counteract uh, Harris's weakness when it comes to her performance at the border? Well, look, I've been down here in Arizona my entire life, and I can tell you, I've never met with, with uh, Senator Kelly, uh, to be honest. Uh, and uh, when you look at the numbers from Arizona, uh, it's led uh, at the top uh, nationwide for several years now when it comes to gotaways. So we're, we're, we have as much of a mess down here in, in uh, Arizona as you see sometimes in Texas. Uh, so, you know, we're just going to wait and see. Uh, but to be honest, you know, I, I think it was uh, telling, uh, tell, all telling when we did meet with J.D. Vance down on the border, especially it was in an area that's very notorious notorious for these gotaways. It's very notorious for drug smuggling. Uh, and, and I think, you know, uh, just moving forward, we need someone that is willing to be tough and, and secure our borders for the long run, not just, you know, when it's campaign season. Well, he's also been a big advocate for gun control, certainly in the wake of the attempted uh, killing of his wife, Gabby Giffords. Uh, and certainly, he, you know, they've got that foundation that, that to raise money for gun control. But I guess the bigger question here for Arizona voters in general is, is, is what they want to see. Do they want to see an economic story coming out of each of these candidates for president? Is it the border story? What is most important to them right now? Because Arizona is in play in the general election come November, sir. You know, honestly, it's got to be both. But uh, you cannot ignore the immigration problems that Arizona has been seeing for a number of years nowadays. And, you know, and even if you start talking about, you know, the uh, the gun control, uh, I mean, that, that's something I, I comment more on the uh, immigration issue. But you got to wonder, look, when you've allowed so many individuals from so many different countries to enter our country, military aged men. Right. And then on top of that, you, you want to disarm Americans. Uh, that's just I, I think just that's just bad business, to be honest. Yeah, well, I mean, certainly he did flip, Kelly did, he flipped Martha McAll uh, McSally's seat. Uh, so he, he has strength in Arizona, but again, is he the right person for vice president? We're waiting to see. Let's talk about the border more now. Uh, the Department of Homeland Security says it's temporarily pausing that program that allowed up to 30,000 migrants from Cuba, from Haiti, Nicaragua, Venezuela to fly directly into the U.S. every month. There's this internal report that revealed significant amounts of fraud in the program among those sponsoring the applicants, social security numbers, addresses, phone numbers for sponsors that were being used in some cases hundreds of times, meaning they were fake at the end of the day. And, and the Biden-Harris administration now has paused uh, that program because of these reports of rampant uh, fraud. Did we know about this before? Did you know about this before? And are you surprised that it's just coming to light? I'm surprised they're, they're, I'm not surprised they're doing it now, obviously, because it's campaign season, as I've said. But look, uh, you know, the fraud has been happening, you know, since this administration took over. You have had millions of individuals that have come across the border. They've claimed asylum. Everyone knows they don't have a true asylum claim, but they've released them. So, you know, when you start looking at what they're doing now, it is just simply because of, you know, political, their political message that they want to come across as, you know, they've been trying to take care of the border and issues like that. If they were really concerned with fraud, uh, they should be asked, what happens to the, the millions of uh, military-aged men that you've already allowed to enter the country claiming asylum when we know they don't have a true asylum claim, and where are they? That's an even bigger question. They're trying to push an agenda now to say, hey, we're stopping the flow. We know that there's uh, issues there, so we're going to try to lower the numbers. But the question that you should ask this administration is, 
What happens to the millions you allowed in? And where are these millions that you allowed in? And they're not going to have an answer for that. So, uh, you know, when you start looking at what they're doing now, it's simply, you know, they're for political reasons, well, not because they really care. Well, let's stay with the politics then of all of this, because these Chinese migrants that are rushing to find a way to get to the U.S. southern border before the court doors close, <clears throat> that's a new report on the Wall Street right. Journal. And here's what the journal writes. They say the possibility of former President Trump's return puts pressure on those fleeing life under Xi Jinping as Bolivia becomes the new jump off point for 7,000, that 7,000 mile trek. And then these Chinese migrants are now reportedly starting their journeys to the border from as far away as La Paz, Bolivia, because visas are offered on arrival. And remember, Ecuador, which has been a very popular access point, they suspended visa free yeah. arrivals no for the visa. Chinese nationals uh, last month. Art. Right. And, and you start seeing it when you actually look at the numbers. I know, you know, you, we focus on one point, but when you start seeing what has been released by the Department of Homeland Security, they've shown that, you know, individuals from over 160 different countries are coming across. And every time you see one rush in one area, you realize that a lot of these agents that are out there, they're having to be focused on transportation and focused on processing. And you have all these other individuals that are coming across. That's why, uh, you know, honestly, under this administration, we don't know how many people have come across. You can ask them. They don't know how many people have a, are gotaways. They don't know how many people are that are not on the terrorist watch list, but they're involved with, with possible terrorist organizations. They just have no clue because the message from day one was, come one, come all, ask for asylum, you'll get released. And that's what they've been doing. And, and then to top it all off, they don't even know where any of these individuals truly are. So when you even hear about this fraud, you know, uh, you can ask them, do you know where the individuals you've released in, where they are, what housing units they're at, where you know, what cities they've been living at, and they don't have any idea on, under any of those circumstances. So now, so close to an election, it's, it's just a little bit too late, and, and you know, and the American public is smart enough to figure out that it's only for political reasons. How are Border Patrol officers doing now? I mean, we have seen in the past you know, reports of, of, of suicide, divorce, alcoholism. I mean, these Border Patrol agents, not just in Arizona, but also in Texas in particular, really been suffering right. under the weight of their jobs. They want to do their job. They just don't have the resources. Uh, they don't have the technology they need. They're overwhelmed by the processing of these migrants. How, how is the mental health right now of these officers? Look, uh, so I speak with agents across the entire country, and I can tell you the morale has never been as low as it is now. Uh, and a lot of it is all, those, all the things that you just stated. But at the same time, agents feel, uh, you know, uh, like they, they want to do more. It's insane. These agents want to do their job, and, and I, they realize that processing is part of their job. But it's frustrating when they're stuck in a processing center and they're listening to the radio chatter that groups are coming in and there's no one to respond. It's frustrating when they realize that when they finally go out to the field, they see footprints and garbage and everything else, knowing that groups traveled through there. And, and what makes it even more... Uh, you know, demoralizing is you realize that under this administration, it's been very easy to come across, ask for asylum and get released. So then you start thinking, how bad is the criminal background on these other individuals that don't even do that? They go through other uh, areas because they don't even want to be apprehended or detected. Art Del Cueto. Art, thank you so much for being here this morning. And certainly we're going to be following your work. Thank you, sir.